We really feel that passion of how we're changing the lives of people who are going blind. So it's, it's real personal. Welcome back to Talent Hunters, powered by MRI Network, where each week we talk with the world's top talent strategists and executive recruiters. If you want to build talented teams that drive your company to big goals and big growth, then this podcast is for you. And now let's join the conversation with today's episode of Talent Hunters. I want to welcome Colleen and, and Cameron Hoffman uh, to my second podcast. <laughs> and thank you very much for taking part in this. They own uh, Visionary Executive Search. Colleen has been a recruiter for, we just won't say how many years, <laughs> but she's been a part of MRI for the last nine years. And Cameron, uh, you've been a part of us for about almost eight years, I think it is, in recruiting as an AE for about five. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So what we want to do is, is get into, you know, what really drives you guys and, and what, what you're doing to motivate and inspire each other and have fun in the business that, that we love because it's so doggone rewarding. So I want to start out with you, Colleen. Is there, is there a story that you have that really defines the trials and tribulations that you've had to go through in producing a home run. Does anything come to mind? Yeah. Um, a recent placement uh, was was probably one of our most rewarding. Um, we're in the clinical side of retina, and um, we were asked to find a head of medical affairs. And um, we had presented eight candidates, and they told us to not send any more. And so we just sat back and went, uh-oh. And um, three months later... We found out our candidate had made it to the top two, and uh, we also found out there were 345 applicants for that position. <laughs> so we were blown away by that, and uh, sure enough, our candidate got the offer uh, right after Labor Day, and uh, she's starting next week. So it was it was quite quite the ordeal and up against 345 other candidates. So. Wow, that's that's an amazing number, and what a lesson for everybody out there to realize: you're presenting a candidate, you're not the only person presenting candidates. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of people getting candidates in there and candidates themselves. And congratulations on on hitting a home run. Three hundred and forty five applicants. <laughs> that's just insane, <laughs> Colleen. With the success that you've had building your company, what inspired you to to truly become a recruiter? Well, I had been recruited myself for many years, and I thought it was just a really neat job. I, it was actually a mother-son team, now that I think about it, that were always calling me in Iowa. Yeah, mother-son team. Hard to believe. Here we are, right? <laughs> oh, I'm and, so uh, jealous. Yeah, I met, I met them, you know, a million years ago, and I was pharmaceutical medical device sales. And in Iowa, there wasn't a whole lot of pickings for, uh, you know, executives in, in Iowa. And so I just kind of thought it was a really neat thing to do is to be a recruiter. And and, uh, and since I know what it feels like to be called by a recruiter and how exciting it is and changing your life, I was like, you know, I, I think I'm going to do this. And uh, my best friend, who's still in the business, uh, she inspired me to uh, buy this franchise. So here I am um, almost 10 years later <laughs> and uh, glad oh, she that's... encouraged me to do it. Yeah. What an exciting story. That's, mm -hmm. that's incredible. What do you attribute your ability to identify A player can candidates? Cameron. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> yeah, he's Cameron? the hunter. I'm just the matchmaker. <laughs> so, Cameron, what, what do you what do you attribute? What what skill do you look for in A player candidates as a general skill, not just a specific job? Yeah, I mean, I'll throw it back to Colleen's connections. You know, never burn a bridge throughout our 
career, we've been lucky enough to work with amazing people in general. And um, it's really about all, who you know and uh, the passive candidates that are out there are the ones that are the best. Uh, so luckily, uh, I consider us the therapists of the ophthalmic world. So we know the ins and outs of everything that's happening. Uh, our, our candidates tell us things that they want to tell their boss, colleagues, maybe even their significant others. So it's, it's definitely nice to know the ins and outs and who's looking, who's not, who and what they're open to, you know, what their dream job is and how we can get it for them. Uh, so the eight attributes are, you know, they've just entrenched themselves specifically in the retina world at this point, since we've been doing that for the last three years strong, we, we really look to someone that has just dedicated their life to this, to these diseases of the retina and have a lot of passion in that. Um, yeah. Wow. It's, it's interesting, but why do you feel, and either one of you can answer this, why do you feel these candidates, what do you do that, that draws these candidates in that they can trust you so much instead of all the other, forgive my terminology, flaky flesh peddlers out there? What do you do that, that gains their trust? Either one of you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hitting it on a personal level. You know, we really care about not only their professional path that they're taking, but their personal growth that they can gain from this. And we want to place them in a job that helps foster a better family life, personal life, professional life. Um, we really consider that uh, your colleagues aren't just your business partner. They're, they become your family. You're hanging out with them just as much as your family at home, if if not more. And uh, it really, really means a lot to find a, a family in the ophthalmology world that that you trust. Um, and so they they take us as as their personal guide and uh, trust that we know the right company and have done our research. And since we've been in it almost a decade, uh, we, we definitely know the ins and outs. Gaining trust is so valuable. It really is. A lot of people talk about it, but you guys actually demonstrate it. Can you give me an example of a question you might ask a candidate that would plant the seed for you caring as much as you do? Well, they usually know we care. <laughs> they, uh, they, they, uh, you know, when we call, they, they're they ready. They're ready because we already have identified the company as something that they're going to want to be involved with. We we luckily have the choice of who we, we want to work with. And we, we tend to grab the hot companies, uh, the startups and, um, and such because we – have a pulse of the industry because we are so specific in ophthalmology that that's all we do. 100% ophthalmology. And so, uh, we dedicate every minute of our day to researching who's hot, who's not, who's moving, who's shaking. And so then we contact those companies and ask if we can get involved in bringing them the best talent. So it makes for a lot of fun because we, don't work with the the big companies. We work with these startups and that's where usually people want to go for more challenge, for more reward, for more career advancement. And so it's usually those things that are, uh, are having them come, uh, on board and wanting, you know, be in, be in the process is because we've got a hot startup. That's usually what's going on. Well, you must have an awfully, good capture of the talent that's in your your dig mm -hmm. oh yeah mm -hmm. we have how many 30, working on as long as you have 30,000 linkedin connections or something all right oh all God. all ophthalmology rock, <laughs> rock stars you and the kardashians way to go <laughs> so cameron what 
What inspired you to come to work for your mom in the search world? Uh, yeah, I went to Boise State Business School and right out of college, she hired me as her internet researcher. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd seen her working in the recruiting world growing up when I was, I don't know, maybe eight years old. She had her own recruiting firm uh, and then popped into the ophthalmology field. And uh, I actually went on calls with her down to Omaha and different places around the Midwest. So I, I saw her dedication in, to this field. And so it was, it was an easy transition to know that this was the right thing to do in that sense. Um, I've always loved kind of the sales aspect of businesses and uh, the internal business world in general. So I felt this was a great uh, step into that um, without being fully entrenched in it. So, but yeah. You know, I, I it explained to you too that I, I just got to sit down and have a discussion with a gentleman that's been in business for just a month. And I asked him the same question. I asked him, why did you get into this? And he said he wanted to build a family legacy that he could pass down to his, through his family. And that's what you folks are doing here. You're <laughs> building that legacy. And, and I'm jealous because <laughs> this, it's, you can see the passion that you've always had, Colleen, because I've known you for several years. But Cameron, you and I have never met, but I can feel your passion coming out for the business and the desire to be in, not the recruiting business isn't what I'm talking about, but the dig that you're in, you've just made that a part of your passion too. Colleen, your firm has placed many, many leaders in the company, ranging from startups to Fortune 500. What? Just got a national alert for something. Oh my what do you attribute your ability to identify and recruit such high caliber candidates. And, and I know that Cameron's running front line on that, but you're the matchmaker. So you're setting, you're setting the goal. You're setting the benchmark that we got. What, what attributes do you feel you're setting for these people? Well, you know, it just, it depends on the position we've, we've, we've uh, been pretty steady with uh, people that, are very high level, um, even um, ophthalmologists as well. So um, it, it it gets it gets real when you're when you're actually talking to a, a doctor <laughs> and and um, trying to get them to change their career. And you know, here they've been an ophthalmologist, and we're going to ask them to change from one company to another. And they're they're just the kindest people you, we feel like we're friends with everybody. It's, it's, it's one of the wildest businesses you can ever be in is when we go to these conferences, which we attend about four times a year, we have hugs, handshakes, dinners, drinks. It's just like going to see our friends. It's the coolest thing. And that's really why Cameron loves it so much. It's so personal. And um, so when we are going after a, a candidate, it's like Cameron and I, are, our minds are, are intertwined. I'll be, all I have to do is say one thing like Frank and he'll be like, yeah, let's talk to Frank, you know, Jim, even a common name like John or Jim, he knows exactly who I'm talking about, which is kind of the coolest thing about our business. I'm just like, what about bill, you know, and it's just really a fun part about our business is that we read each other's minds and then we know the candidates and we generally feel the same way about that candidate is, should we go call them or not? I don't think we've ever had a discrepancy on, um, you know, who we should call first. It's pretty fun. It's pretty wow. fun. It's very unique. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's, you know, the same people that clean worked with, I don't know what, 20 years, 23 years ago, yeah. 23 years ago, we are still in the ophthalmology field. Uh, so mm -hmm. it just goes to show what this industry does for the people that come into it. Uh, it's something that you just don't want to leave. So yeah. 
it was great to have those connections for that many years. And yeah, it's, it's super cool. Yeah. We, I've known some of the people in the industry for 23, 25 years. They're still there. It's, they say the joke is that it's a hotel California you can check out, but you can never leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much the joke that we say about every week. <laughs> so do you do you feel that you are personalizing more than you're using technology or how are you using technology to leverage your your business today? Either one of you. Uh, yeah, I think technology nowadays is just for that the marketing aspect of uh, keeping people informed and making sure that we stay connected uh, easier than before. Um, you know, and it's LinkedIn is obviously something that we utilize often and uh, not as much email blasting and things like that, which, which is nice because it's that passive touch point that we can, you know, stay connected with everyone in the industry. Anything to add to that, Colleen? Um, yeah, we, we've you know, done a few um, marketing things, but actually, to be honest, we, we, we don't really do anything other than um, LinkedIn and um, going to the shows. So we're, we're very much hands on. We're, you know, and that's what's nice about it is we haven't had to... Um, put a lot of effort into a, a great website or something like that. We've just done it through, you know, being well-known, I guess every week I have someone say, Oh, you're the most well-known recruiters in the whole industry. And we're like, yay. <laughs> and I, I just make sure I give Cameron the kudos of it because he's the bird dog in LinkedIn. And um, I think that's unique. I think it's very unique approach. I don't advise it for all recruiters because, you, you know, because we are, we are, have niched ourselves so much in this ophthalmology world that I think that if you do, you need to go to the shows, you need to shake the hands and you have the dinners and have the um, conversations and the hugs with your people. And then they just know that we're real people. And when, when the timing's right, it's all about timing When timing's right. We're going to give them a call. And have something for them. So that's the fun part. So this question is for both of you. What When you go to the shows, is your intent truly to, to meet and greet? Or do you come away with the shows with candidates and and or search assignments? What What's your objective of the show? Yeah, it's definitely just meet and greet. Yeah. yeah. There's... We don't have a mindset of gathering names and anything of that sort. Uh, just putting a face to the name, putting a face to visionary executive search, just saying hi and catching up and really hitting on that personal level as much as possible. Um, really don't even try to dig too deep into the business world of it all. Uh, we know that they're there to make money and meet ophthalmologists and uh, get their product out there further. So we, we let them do their thing as much as possible and we come around when when needed and when we can. Now, I know you guys don't just sit around and wait for people to call you. How do you get your name? How do you approach companies today that you're not doing business with today? Well, um, we essentially say, you know, here we are, a great, you know, email. And, and then I generally go after someone I know that is connected to the company. So I will ask for a referral. So I will say to Sharon, Sharon, can you introduce me to the CEO of La La, La Company? And they'll be like, oh, okay, sure. So that is our basic approach is to try and get our name in front of them through someone that we know. A referral, you know, referral is the only, is the best way. Other than that, uh, if we see an opening, then we will find a candidate for that. 
And then we will contact them and say, Hey, Hey, here's the candidate that you're probably wanting for that opening. And, um, a that, warm call to start. Hopefully. Yeah. Warm and call. Then, and then a cold call if yeah. we need to. Yeah. Yeah. So you two are so in sync. <laughs> how, how did, how did that grow? Many years of this, you know, luckily nine years of fostering the business together has definitely helped uh, our personal lives on top of professional. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely takes a lot of work and headbutting and <laughs> some days it just doesn't work and <laughs> email and text is the only thing that we can do to communicate together and <laughs> that's totally fine. But you got you to gotta understand where people are at each other are at in that headspace or that day or whatever it is and, you know, take it slow in general. We've really seen each other grow together, not grow apart. That's, that's the, the coolest thing. And I try and give him as much recognition on that as I can, because he's not been in a real job. You know, this is the only job he's had. And, um, I was so glad he went to next gen because it just opened his eyes to the world of recruiting, first of all, and the, you know, what he's got in front of him to take over. And it, it was just like life changing, wasn't it for you? Definitely. Just yeah. completely life changing. Um, I should have sent him to something way sooner. That's for sure. I mean, even just a, I took him to the first, the 50th, anniversary meeting the MRI remember that but he was yep. not focused then <laughs> at all <laughs> now, that next gen program was it, it it's just phenomenal because you get to rub elbows with people that are doing the exact same thing you're doing without there being any threat or anything I mean it's kind of like this conversation here with other people yet you're learning skills and so forth so that's that's a phenomenal Cameron when you think back on that next gen experience What's the one thing that stands out to you that you felt was a gift to you to, to your success? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, the connection with others in the same place and uh, felt like if I was an orphan, I found another orphan to <laughs> really, you know, chat with and yeah, can go through this whole process together. Um, you know, didn't feel alone in that sense. Uh, so it was really cool to connect and hear other people's stories and just like where they're at and how they're going to navigate the next generation and become the owners of their business. So it was, it was awesome to connect and then meeting the CEOs of each of the companies, um, was super awesome too. the Q and A's, throughout were amazing and they just had little snippets of knowledge and uh, drops that they gave throughout that definitely are still with me now. So it was awesome. Oh, wonderful. That's so good to hear. So this one I want to ask each of you separately. So Colleen, the business is intense. We deal with frustrations every day, every day. We have sometimes little victories every day, sometimes big victories every day. What do you do to unwind? Oh, <laughs> well, that's that's definitely a a, um, a thing for me. I I'm uh, you know behind the desk all day, so I get out. I I go ride my bike. I do some exercise, um, get some fresh air, and golf during the you know during the times that I'm able to. So uh, exercise, that's what I do. Just a lot of, I've got to get out and move. So yeah, keeps me, keeps me sane. Yeah. Same Cameron, same thing. What, I mean, you're dealing with the candidates, you're dealing with all the, the hiring authorities all day. You're still learning the business. You've been doing it a long time. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying this. I mean, you're very successful at what you're doing, but what do you do to, to let loose of the pressures? Yeah, I'd say similar as well. Uh, I do a lot of whitewater kayaking and uh, snowboarding, slipboarding, and 
things like just nature. I love hiking um, and just getting out outside into the mountains in general. It's definitely keeps me alive. That is for sure. Oh, that's so positive. <laughs> Colleen, what, what excites you about the future in our business? Well, specifically, um, what we're doing within the ophthalmology uh, specialty uh, is this ret the retina portion of our business is very emotional. It's very, very emotional. It's actually personal. Uh, Cameron's grandma is, is suffering from the um, age-related macular degeneration. So we really feel that passion of how we're changing the lives of people who are going blind. So it's, it's real personal, you know, I mean, there's such a big um, influx of new drugs and new devices for this horrible disease that one out of every three people will uh, uh, get uh, over the age of 70. So age-related macular degeneration is a real thing that people don't even think about, you know, they, they're not very proactive on it. And I think that Cam and I feel kind of proactive on, on helping um, to ho hopefully um, cure this, this disease, but at least control it. And so we're finding the people, the, the, you know, with the degrees or the backgrounds that have been in it for, you know, 10 to 20 years that we're now, no pun intended, our eyes are wide open now to say, wow, we're going to change uh, the world with the people that we're recruiting to help control or cure this disease. So it's really rewarding, personally. Is that you too, Cameron? Is that is that where your heart is too? Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's it's amazing to see what a lot of our candidates have done and continue to do, and um, I'm grateful that we're able to make their dreams come true with the jobs that they have been working towards through ten years of school and eight years of following fellowship and following up after that and. Um, yeah, just getting them to the point where they've always wanted to be and work so hard to get to is it's awesome to be in that position. Very lucky. I'm fascinated with that whole that that whole talk there. I, I don't mean to to distract, but it reminds me of Danny Thomas with the St. Jude. It's you guys are focused in an area that is very close to your hearts because of family. Mm hmm. And yet you're so attached to it as it's growing and you're influencing the business with the recruits and the candidates and the hiring authorities that you're dealing with and so forth, that you look back on it after retirement, after whatever, and you can still track to see the footprint you left in that industry. Mm -hmm. That's, I've never felt something like that before. And, and that's just fascinating. It really is. What else can you say about the industry that you're working in? Um, you know, your eyesight is is everything. Um, so um, I just never realized I've been in a lot of specialties as a pharmaceutical and medical device rep. Um, I just never realized how important it it is to be. Uh, on the forefront of new technologies and things. If, without your eyes, what are you going to do, you know? So when when you think about it in orthopedics or cardiac or uh, aesthetics, you know, um, derm, as far as recruiters go, we feel like we're in one of the most heartfelt specialties on the planet. And... Um, we take it very, very seriously, and you can never detach from it. It's it's just in your blood once once you've got into the specialty of ophthalmics, which is why, as Cameron said, I've my friends, I have friends of over 20, 20, 25 years that are still in the business. My favorite thing of my favorite call of the day is to call a candidate who I can see that they were in ophthalmology. 
and they went out of it due to maybe a layoff or um, buyout or something like that with the company. And they went into some other specialty and I call them and say, do you want to get back into the eye world? And they're like, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. You know, they're just static to be, go back. They want to go back. No one wants to leave. It's, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Well, I really want to thank you both for letting me come into your world and learn a little bit of something I didn't know anything about. <laughs> and and what an education and how rewarding your world is right now. And bless your hearts for what you're bringing to everybody out there, not just the recruiting world, but to life itself. And, and thank you. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. 